Hello everybody, this is Displace, and today we will be showcasing a powerful leveling build for rogues in phase four that's going to allow you to go from level 50 to 60 easily. Some changes in phase four have made some of our standard abilities more attractive, and I've been having an easy time leveling with this build. What build am I talking about? The backstab build. The shiv rune is no more and has been replaced with cutthroat. This is the rune that makes this build possible. Your ambush, backstab, and garret abilities no longer require you to be behind your target. And backstab has a 15% chance to make your next ambush not require stealth. What makes this even better is when you couple this with the changes to slaughter from the shadows rune, backstab has its energy cost reduced to 30 energy. This brings backstab and ambush front and center as your main abilities. What's great about this build is that it throws the entire rogue gameplay on its head. We are taking two very powerful abilities and bringing them to the forefront, allowing us to kill enemies so fast that combo points and poisons aren't even as important as they are in other builds and could be ignored if we want. There's a lot of flexibility with this build in both how it starts and the runes we use, which I'll point out as we go. So here is the base for the build. We're going to be going down the combat tree to take Blade Flurry. This is going to allow us to cleave down our targets really easily. In the assassination tree, take Remorseless Attacks and Malice to increase our crit chance. Then we're going to pick up Murder because that increases our damage to almost everything and take five points in lethality. Since backstab is going to be our main ability, an increase in crit damage is going to just let us kill things even faster. And in the subtly tree, we're going to be taking five points into opportunity. As we progress our leveling, we're going to be filling out the subtly tree just a little bit more with an additional eight points, five points in camouflage, and three points in improved ambush. The remaining two points are going to be going into the assassination tree, either all into slice and dice, or if you find yourself using finishing moves, you can put one of those points into relentless strikes. Now, if you want to play more stealthy, you can instead start out the build with camouflage and improved ambush instead of going down the assassination tree. The reason I didn't do this is because when you're leveling an open world, doing quests and, and incursions and things, there is so much competition for mobs that I found trying to stealth for uh, an ambush opener was actually slowing me down. For the runes, there are really only two main runes that are needed for this build, and there's a lot of flexibility with the other ones depending upon your gameplay. So the first required rune is Cutthroat, which is going to go on the hands. This is what allows you to use backstab and ambush facing your targets. The next is Slaughter from the Shadows, which reduces your backstab by 30 points and increases the damage done by 60%. Now backstab was already more powerful than Mutilate, but this added increase to damage done makes it even stronger. And with it being 30 points, it's just your go-to ability, which just blows any other build out of the water while you're leveling. Next, we have Combat Potency for the Head. Not much to say here. It's just a way of getting more energy for more backstabs. For the Waste, we can either use Shadow Step or Shuriken Toss. I use Shadow Step to get from mob to mob uh, way easier than just running. I don't use Shuriken Toss because most of my AoE actually comes from Blade Flurry, but if I was running dungeons, then Shuriken Toss is a good addition. For the feet, all three runes are good, and this is going to come down to a personal preference and will depend upon your gameplay. Now, Master of Subtlety is going to be an increase to your DPS if you're using stealth. If you're just running from mob to mob, either rolling with the punches or waylay will also be good. And for the legs, Again, all three options can be used, and they have complementary runes for the wrist slots. So let's break these down. If you're going to use poisons, which is actually not required on this build, but if you do, and Venom is a good choice. You can couple this with Cut to the Chase to increase your slice and dice. However, depending upon what you're fighting, 
if they're immune to your poisons, this is going to be a pointless rune combination. If you're having problems with taking too much damage, you can go Blade Dance. Now this increases your party chance and increases your attack power. And if you couple this with the Unfair Advantage rune, you'll be getting in some extra attacks. And then if you don't want to use poisons, then go with Between the Eyes. This is a good finishing move that stuns the target, which can mean the difference between life and death. For the wrists, as said above, you're either going to go to Cut to the Chase or Unfair Advantage. I prefer Unfair Advantage for the extra hit because the mob will usually die before your slice and dice is through anyway. So the only time Cut to the Chase would be beneficial is if you're chain pulling mobs anyway, and you couple that with the Envenom Rune. This build's rotation is super simple. If we can, ambush from stealth. Otherwise, we backstab, backstab, backstab. We just smash that backstab button until we get an ambush proc, and then we ambush. Plain and simple. If you want, you can use uh, some of the combo points for slice and dice, but because mobs die pretty fast, I only cast slice and dice at one or two combo points. Now, if we're using poisons and in venom, then we can use in venom as our main finishing move. However, this is just a filler. Looking at the amount of poison damage done when I was leveling, it really wasn't enough to make a huge difference. Remember earlier when I said that poisons weren't as important? This shows you right here how little of importance they are compared to the raw physical damage of backstab. So if you don't want the hassle of applying poisons, this build still does amazing damage. If you aren't using Envenom and are using something like Between the Eyes, using this as a finishing move can help you live longer and retain health because damage does not break the stun. So far, I've been having fun with this build, but even though this build is powerful, the two-button nature of this could become boring fast. So let me know in the comments below what you think, and I will see you in Azeroth.